for that look at weather and traffic. Really excited now, joined by Paul Debaye. You may know him as the owner of Burgundy Lion. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, uh, we're, you're on today because we've got this goal initiative soccer tournament happening this weekend. Yeah. One thing I find, Paul, amazing was people take a love of something and they turn it into good. Because a lot of people who love soccer, they sit at home, they watch it on TV. You love soccer, you've said, okay, I want to do something good with this. What are you doing? Well, we're raising funds for a local charity as well as a, an international one, but still Canadian-based. So Montreal Community Care, Share the Warmth, and Right to Play, which is a really exciting one that we added in this year. And uh, who's participating? I mean, I'll be there. I know I'm on this media team, but what else is happening? Who, are we, who do we expect to see there on we, we got bars and restaurants from around the city, all corners, which is nice. That's, again, the whole thing about soccer is it brings everybody together. Yeah. We're showing the World Cup, uh, the two matches that day on the Jumbotron. It's free. So that's going to be amazing. Germany, uh, Mexico, Brazil, and Switzerland. So those are, you know, those are actually marquee games. And it's at uh, Percival Molson Stadium, yeah. right? So this is part of the time. city. Yeah, part uh, of the city. You know, very rare you get a chance to play on one of these fields, right? So well, I'm kind of looking forward to this. Well, well that's it. And, and part of what's exciting about it is a lot of people that might have been to the stadium they've never been on the pitch. So this is a great opportunity just to walk right on, see it all, you know, get really hands on with everything. Uh, part of the fun, obviously, you know, if if you're involved, there's got to be good food, good drink as well. Obviously, the restaurants are here. So just tell me about that whole experience. Someone's going to show up here. To to support the cause on Sunday, what should they expect? They're going to walk in. Well, one, like I said, there's on, on the Jumbotron is going to be that fantastic game. Then there's food, and there's drink stations, there's smoothies, there's haircuts, there's tattoos, there's face painting, there's uh, an EA a sports station. There's, I mean, there's really, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on in the periphery, but you're going to be able to watch some of these teams, uh, boys and girls, playing games. It sounds like there's got to be, with all the stuff happening, there's got to be a lot of people working behind this to make this happen. Why do you, why, A, why do you do it? Why do you put in the work? You're a restaurant owner. That's, that's a very tough job. That's a time-consuming task. Why do you say, okay, I need to find the time here to do something like this? Well, one, I'm a restaurant owner, but with partners. So that's the great thing about having partners. Yeah. And two, uh, you have to give back. It's just that simple. If you're going to, if the public's going to support you in your endeavors, you have to give back to the community that you're thriving in. And why did you say soccer is the thing? Why, you know, I want to do something. I want to make sure it involves soccer. Because I'm addicted. It's such you're a fantastic sport. We've got World Cup coming now, too, which just makes it so much more exciting. How did you get addicted? What, what made you a soccer fan? What was it? I was just a kid, and I watched the World Cup, and, and it just bit me, and it just grew. I mean, it really is a sport that even if you're not totally into right away, yeah. over time, it just gets worse and worse. You just get more and more excited. You get, you get you, all the nuances and you get more excited about the players and the, and the rivalry. So it just, it's really how it all happened. We're seeing some Im images uh, from uh, the Goal Initiative soccer tournament right there on our screen right now. Paul, why don't you tell me about this World Cup? You know, I I'm someone that does watch. I was watching yesterday. I'm going to watch a lot of games. What do you think is going to happen in this tournament? Who are your picks? Who are you rooting for? England, 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 all the way. <laughs> uh, but I think what people are talking about and what sort of when you read about it is it looks like it really could be sort of Germany's uh, turn. You know, that, I mean, that's the thing that I've been hearing. And listen, when you talk to the people that say they're the experts, right, they're all saying, well, this year it doesn't look like we're going to have surprises. It's going to be usual suspects. They're mentioning Br Brazil. They're mentioning Germany. But, you know, there's always a surprise but in these tournaments. It's, it's football. It's yeah. soccer. You never know. I mean, the Spanish coach was fired a day before, there, two days before they even hit Is the pitch. Is that not nuts? How do it, you fire a coach a day before a tournament? Well, you can, you know why now. Yeah. You know the backstory, but yeah. it's not the point. The point is, you just never know with football, and that's what's exciting about it. They're using VR too this year, so that should be an interesting sort of play to see how that works out. But you just never know. Uh, this tournament has raised a lot of money. Can you just give me some some idea here? A, how much money have you raised so far? And, and more specifically, what you're going to be doing with the money? Uh, well, we've raised just about over 300,000, 310,000 total over the, the years. This is our eighth year coming up. And again, what happens is the charities themselves that get these funds directly from the teams when they're paying to participate, they have to direct it towards youth programming. So we already sort of know where it's going to go. And they're actually all going to be there, except for um, Right to Play, because they're based out of Toronto. But mm -hmm. they're all going to be there. So people can actually talk directly to the charities to find out exactly where the money's going. Okay, my last soccer experience was in 2014 uh, oh. in a, uh, a co-ed co soccer league. <laughs> Very low level. I was one of the worst players. Uh, what kind of challenge am I up for on Sunday? You're up for a sort of a, a medium challenge. We'll okay. go not low. Uh, the low level sort of disappears within one or two beverages. Okay. And then uh, sort of the more intense teams that really, you know, really want to go out the distance. You know, they're, they've been training, they're working out, they're, they're, they're ready, they're drinking smoothies. So uh, I think your team and your group, I think everything will be just fine. You know, a couple of 20-minute games, have some fun, 
enjoy the weather. Rain or shine, we're there. It's free to the public. It should be fun. You know, it should be a good uh, Father's Day. Uh, free to the public. Come enjoy some good food, some good drink, uh, all for a good cause. And, uh, Paul, I'll see you on Sunday, and I'll see you at the Burgundy Lion for the World Cup. Thanks so much. Thank you. Paul Debay, owner it. of the Burgundy Lion. We'll be right back right here on Breakfast Talk.